Hi, my name's Paul Downing. Um, I'm sorry for the few bum notes there that you probably heard, but uh, I've not been able to play very well for the last three years. I've got a bum hand and a bum shoulder. I apologise. This whole deal is uh, about Buddy Holly's birthday. Uh, that'll be the day he totally changed my life. I've got it as a birthday present in 1957, the single, on a 78 because it sold out in the 45s. And subsequently I managed to get, you know, old boy and Peggy Sue and even picked up the Chirping Crickets by the early part of 1958. Um, which brings us to the fact that he toured England. I'm from a, a town called Holling, Yorkshire. And he toured England in, in March of 1958. First time we got to see him actually move and play was on Sunday night at the London Palladium, which is our version of really the Ed Sullivan show, if you will. And they're in full tuxes. And the guy drops on his knees in the middle of Peggy Sue and absolutely kills it. And I'm looking at his guitar and I'm going, what the hell is that? Because nobody really knew I mean, you knew it was a guitar, but you'd never quite seen a guitar with gears on it, you know. Fender Stratocaster, right? But we didn't know it was a Fender Stratocaster. Anyway, next morning at school, every kid in school was talking about it, because it was a Sunday night, the Monday morning. And I'm sure every kid all over England was talking about it as well. I mean, I know Lennon and McCartney were. Uh, crickets, Beatles. I know Alan Clark and Graham Nash were. Hollies, Buddy Holly, right? Anyway, he ends up coming to my hometown, Hull, in, in, uh, in Yorkshire, on the 19th of March. And this is the, this is the bill from the show. Now then, for some, unbeknown reason I didn't get chance to go but my best friend did and I I ended up with the souvenir program Buddy Holly and the Crickets the original one taped together I've had since 58 the middle page is really really cool I mean there's a whole thing on them you know coral um, just let me get to it if I can open the middle, middle page here. Yeah. Part one and part two. Uh, there it is, right there. You can see that. Especially the one on the bottom, because they closed the show. But there were two shows. There was the early show and the late show. All right. Don't know which one my buddy went, went to, my buddy Rod. Who's been my best friend since we were eight. But it says, the great American recording stars, Buddy Holly and the Crickets, it items selected from. That'll be the day, old boy, Peggy Sue, words of love. Mailman, uh, every day, looking for someone to love. Rock around with Ollie V, which was one of his early ones. Um, uh, written by Sonny Curtis, of course. Uh, and of course, not fade away, the first Rolling Stones hit in America, okay? They stopped traffic in town. Nobody went home. The buses couldn't get round the cenotaph until he appeared on the balcony. By the early part of summer 1958, he had four singles in the British top ten at the same time. You're either in the Buddy Holly camp or the Elvis camp. I happen to be in both camps. Uh, because I kind of dug Elvis too, who could not write all those great Ellie Sun records. But Buddy was, he basically changed my life along with Eddie Cochran and Gene Vincent probably, the three. But Buddy Holly was the real deal. I mean he, he, he played great lead guitar, he wrote the tunes with all his buddies. He had probably one of the best rock and roll bands in the, in the world at that time. And he had a great record producer, Norman Petty, who doesn't really get a lot of credit, but he just let Buddy do, do the number. Anyway, moving on. Um, I was in the original jam, and uh, John Phillips, Mamas and Papas, produced it. And uh, 1958, excuse me, 1968, move on 10 years, we ended up um, 
losing our drummer. And John said, I've got, I've got, I think I've found a drummer for you. So we walk out and it's Jerry Allison in his Volkswagen bus unloading his drums. Of course, my jaw dropped to the ground, right? And he ended up on playing on one of the tracks on our album, which was a, a tune called Empty Feeling. Uh, and Jerry, uh, Red and I send our regards. It's been a long time. I hope he's still in there kicking and all the best to the rest of the crickets. Um, I guess we need to move on again. If I can see, find my notes, I can. Um, sliding down the road. In 1994, I was touring with Herman's Hermits. Uh, Leck had just died, lead guitar player, and I was kind of called in to do it. And uh, I got to stop off and meet Maria Lena. And subsequently, I got together with Jerry Naylor and played with him for a while, played lead guitar. The guy who actually took Buddy Holly's place finally in, in the crickets. Uh, he joined him in uh, late 61. Uh, but the interesting thing about the Maria Lena thing is I had my picture taken with Buddy's J200 and that's me on on the floor of Maria Lena's bedroom there with his J200 it's the it's the guitar everybody thought it was a gill but it was this guitar that you used on all the apartment tapes uh, Peggy Sue got married crying waiting open uh, what to do learning the game uh, that makes it tough all that stuff that Jack Hansen Added, added the backgrounds to afterwards, and then some subsequently the, the fireballs, who ended up back in Jerry and I when we went out and played. So it kind of was all in the family, and it was a wonderful thing. And Maria Elena, I haven't seen you for a long time, darling. I, I truly hope you're okay. Uh, Jerry, Jerry Nail up in. Oregon. Hi Jerry, I hope you're fine. Crickets, I hope you you're doing you're doing good. Tommy, Tommy Alsop, I hope you're fine. Uh, it seems like a long time since all this went down. Uh, I think Phil Everly summed it up the best way actually. They were on tour early on in England, the Everly brothers. And a reporter asked him, he said, do you think the Rolling Stones are the best rock and roll band in the world? And Phil paused for a minute and pulled his head up and he said, did you ever hear Buddy Holly in the cr crickets? Uh, it might have been a bit presumptuous, but I gotta tell you, it's not far off the mark. So I wanna wish, I'm sure we'll all be thinking about him on the 7th. I wanna wish him a happy birthday, happy 80th buddy. I love you and I know there's a load of other people do too. God bless.